Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about abstract modifier rules. I'm going to open up my website, javacjava.com, select menu, Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to the abstract modifier rules. I recommend watching my introduction to the abstract modifier before continuing with this tutorial. In that tutorial I described how an airplane, helicopter, and a glider all have a is a relationship with a flying machine. I also stated that a Boeing 787, FA-18 fighter, and the Cessna amphibian all have a is a relationship with an airplane. In the abstract airplane class, I created two abstract methods, take off and land. I also stated that the flying machine would be a perfect candidate to be a superclass. It makes sense that the abstract airplane class can be derived from an abstract flying machine class. The flying machine class would become even more abstract than the abstract airplane class. One thing that I can think of that all flying machines have in common is that they must take off. The landing may not apply to all flying machines. Take a satellite, for example. It flies around the Earth at a really high altitude, but it will never land. The engineers who make satellites do not design them to have landing capabilities. So it would not make sense to force all subclasses of flying machine to have a land method, whereas all airplane subclasses should require a land method. Now here are some of the rules that apply to, the, to using the abstract modifier. An abstract method cannot have a method body and it must have a semicolon directly after the signature. If at least one method inside of a class is marked abstract, then the class must be marked abstract also. Applying the abstract modifier to a class prevents the class from being instantiated. Can't make an instance out of it, can't make an object out of it. An abstract class can only be inherited. Abstract methods must be overridden in a concrete subclass. A concrete subclass is simply a class without the abstract modifier that extends an abstract class. If a concrete subclass does not override an inherited abstract method, then a compiler error will occur. An abstract class may contain static variables, class variables, and static methods. Alright, let's come down here and <clears throat> highlight all this code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. And I'm going to move the browser off screen here. Okay, I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one real easy by right-clicking, selecting new, and then shortcut, type in CMD next, and finish. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. If you don't, if you get an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory using the MD command called Java. <coughs> now, I already have it, but if you don't, it will create it for you. It will create uh, change directories to the Java folder. I'll make another directory here, and I'm just going to call this one uh, abstract rules. I'm going to change directories to the abstract rules folder, and then I'm on notepad abstract rules.java. Abstract rules.java will be the name of my source code file. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and paste all this stuff in here, so let's go ahead and save this. <coughs> the first thing I want to talk about here is um, the flying machine class. Okay, so it's marked abstract. And if at least one method inside of a class is marked abstract, then the class must be mar marked abstract also, right? So we do. I have this abstract method right here. Abstract void take off. An abstract method cannot have a method body and must have a semicolon directly after the signature. A method signature is its method name plus anything inside of the parameter list, which is the open and closing parentheses there. So you must have a a um, semicolon right here, 
you cannot have any sort of method body. Nothing inside of there, you know, where you normally have, you know, all your code and stuff. An abstract method cannot have any sort of declaration in that in their declaration there. Okay. Um, an abstract method may contain static variables, class variables, and static methods, right? So I've got this uh, static, uh, this class variable right here. Things flying around. That'll just keep a counter of how many times the um, flying, flying machine class, which will get inherited eventually by a concrete class, and how many times that concrete class will um, basically be uh, making an instance of that subclass there. Okay, and I'm doing that through an instance initialization block, right? If you haven't watched my tutorial on the instance initialization block, I highly recommend it. But basically, this instance initialization block will uh, run after the uh, constructor for flying machine is invoked here, right? And it'll run right after the call to super, as a matter of fact, which will then add one to things flying around. It's not the best example for. Um, why we would put a static uh, class or variable in there or any method, but it was just kind of the best one I could come up with there. So, but it'll just demonstrate the principle that it may contain static variables and we can call them later on there too. Okay, so now my abstract class airplane extends flying machines. So once again, if at least one method in, in a, of a class is marked abstract, then the class must be marked abstract also. And I've got this abstract method land here. Right? And I'm just going to reiterate all this stuff here because repetition is good. An abstract method cannot have a method body and must have a semicolon directly after the signature. Right? Okay. Uh, my next thing here is um, I'm going, and of course this airplane is a subclass of flying machine, so it inherits all the stuff from flying machine. Right? And Boeing 787 extends airplane so it, it inherits all of the methods um, from all, all the members from uh, flying from airplane and flying machine now you notice there is no abstract on here so this is our what what's called a concrete subclass and it's simply a class without the abstract modifier that extends an abstract class so this extends an abstract class so this is a solid class or a concrete class so the concrete class now must um, uh, okay, so down here, so we've got takeoff, that's inherited up here, and land down here, and here's where we're overriding takeoff, and all abstract methods must be overridden in the concrete subclass, right? So we have to put takeoff, we have to put land in here, otherwise we'll get an error message. <laughs> okay, and then one of the other rules is um, applying the abstract modifier to a class prevents it from being instantiated, right? So we cannot say something like airplane A equals new airplane, right? The abstract keyword up here prevents airplane from being uh, being instantiated. We can't create an object out of it, okay? All right, and then down here in satellite, this will just basically ex uh, extend flying machine directly, right? Because satellite's not an airplane, but a satellite is a flying machine. So it just has a, a simple takeoff routine there, and it will display that in its, uh, in its takeoff routine. <clears throat> so let's come back up to the abstract rules class in our public static void main here, our main method entry point. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, um, a reference variable commercial of class Boeing 787 type, set it equal to a new reference of a new Boeing 787 object. And then I'm going to use that reference to invoke the takeoff method and the land method. Then I'm going to create a new reference variable Hubble of satellite ob or satellite class type and set it equal to a reference a new reference of a satellite instance or object. And then I'm going to invoke its takeoff method here. And then the last thing I'm going to do is display to the console the string literal number of uh, flying objects in this program plus use the direct, you know, static syntax of, you know, class name dot class variable, right? Things flying around to display that. So let's go ahead and save this and run it here real quick here. Compile it and run it. OK. 
Okay, so the 787 needs a very long runway to take off. 787 needs a very long runway to land. The satellite is propelled into space on a rocket and placed into orbit. Some fly high above the Earth forever. Number of flying objects in this program, too. Okay, so let's uh, come down here and talk about this, this right here, right? Let's see what happens if we try to create an instance of the airplane class, right? Let's go ahead and save that. Let's clear our screen. And we get an error, right? Error. Airplane is abstract, cannot be instantiated, right? So that is, that's that rule right there. It can only be inherited. All right, now, what if we've got our concrete class Boeing 787, and we've got these two, um, two abstract methods up here, right? And if you watched my previous tutorial and, you know, I, I said it basically creates a, an abstract class, creates, a, you know, forces subclasses to override the abstract methods. So what happens if we don't? What happens if we just comment out, for example, the whole takeoff method that we overrode in Boeing 787? Let's come up here and save that and see what happens, right? Okay, so here, Boeing 787 is not abstract and does not override abstract method takeoff in flying machine, right? So you could see, it said, oh, okay, you know, flying machine had ex airplane extended flying machine, right? and flying machine has takeoff. Now, this takeoff was kind of passed down. As long as you're declaring a class abstract and it's inheriting another abstract class, you could keep kind of passing the buck on, on actually implementing this abstract method. So it does, it passes the buck down to airplane. Airplane's abstracts so to say, okay, I'll just keep passing the buck. At some point in time, you are going to have to have a, um, a concrete class that will be forced to implement that. Otherwise, you won't even be able to compile it. So that's what's going on there. Let's go ahead and comment that. We'll put this all back to the way it was, compile it and run it one more time. Okay, so there we go. So that's basically the way the way that works and went through an example of all of the various different rules that I'd applied there and put it into you know, actual source code and explained all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, get rid of that, and leave me with uh, some final thoughts there. Abstract methods are an important tool for design functionality. They allow you to envision a broader purpose for your class and set concrete requirements for any subclass that may inherit it. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.